Hey guys, we're back for section number two. All right, talking about uniformitarianism, um, catastrophicism, and deep time. So make sure that you have your uh, slide deck open to um, uh, record the notes and fill in the blanks and also take down additional notes as we go through the presentation. If we move too quick, pause it, rewind, whatever you need to do, watch the video again. Uh, anything that's going to help you pick up these four learning targets right here. So All if you right. need to, pause them right there. We don't need to read them out for them, do we? Okay, no. All right, so let's go on. Let's start it off. So first part, we got catastrophism. I always have a problem like saying know, that word. It's a weird I know. I gotta think word. about it every time I uh, see it. <laughs> All right. So this is a, a doctrine of catastrophism that states that the Earth's landscape um, has been shaped by great catastrophes. So it's almost like an ideology on on how they thought like all these different things uh, on the Earth were created. That it was just a series of these catastrophic events mm -hmm. that created canyons and uh, mountain ranges or whatever it might be. And they basically looked at everything around them and said, like, hey, that mountain over there, like, that formed in one huge earthquake and exactly. made this mountain form. Which, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was an idea at the time. So yeah. it's definitely something that they believed or they thought was happening. Right. And an example of that is a meteorite impact, and that's the picture that's shown in the slide. And we know that, uh, that if this were to occur, and, and it has happened in Earth's past, that it would dramatically affect the Earth's landscape mm -hmm. and, and, and everything around it in a really short amount of time. So there's probably some opposing viewpoints to that, right? Mm -hmm. Something that wasn't quite that. People didn't always agree with that. If we take a look, it's actually a different viewpoint called uniformitarianism, another goofy one to say. Yeah. Uh, so this one basically says that the physical, chemical, biologic laws that are happening today were happening in the geologic past. That they've always been happening, that they've never, ever stopped happening. So what's going on in this picture here, Mr. Z? All right, so uh, we take a look at the Grand Canyon there, and at the bottom there we have the Colorado River. And the Colorado River flows, it moves sediment, mm -hmm. it erodes away, it kind of goes deeper and deeper and deeper, and then eventually creates that canyon. Mm -hmm. And this is not a catastrophic event, mm -hmm. right? This has been going on for a really, really long time, mm -hmm. and now we have the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it's been happening for tens to dozens of millions of years, so it's something that it's a really long time period. And before, they didn't really have that kind of idea that the Earth was even around that long. Yeah, and that's kind of the, the big thing. They thought that the Earth was not as old as, as we now know it is, so that's why they thought it had to be these catastrophes that mm -hmm. created a lot of the landscape around them. Yeah, and the big take-home message they said was the present is the key to the past. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, like, kind of what's happening now was happening before, and that's how we see our landscape. Exactly. Cool. So that gets us into that time thing. We were talking about how catastrophism, it didn't seem like it took much time, but uniformitarianism takes a long time. Yeah. That's where they had to try and figure out, like, well, how old is the Earth, actually? Yeah, and that's and, and 4.6 billion years old is the age of the Earth, and mm -hmm. that's a huge, huge number. And we'll talk more about that in class and actually do some analogies to kind of give you a better idea of just mm -hmm. how much time that is. And how do we figure out the Earth was that old? Uh, well, they looked at uh, some couple different things. They looked at radioactive isotopes, so mm -hmm. how different isotopes broke down, and they break down at a really slow rate, and they could measure the ratios of isotopes to actually yeah. see how old a rock was. Yeah, and then also the rock sequences, too, of taking a look at, uh, like, the Grand Canyon, for example. Those rock layers that are on the very, very bottom of the canyon, uh, those weren't placed there in some manner, you know, a few thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, a lot longer time had passed for those layers to be there. Yeah, and just the kind of idea of those rocks are different ages, too. Mm -hmm. Like the ones on bottom, do you think they're older or younger than the ones on top? I think they'd be a lot older than the ones on top. Yeah. And then they looked at fossils. They saw uh, just some preserved remains of animals, and uh, they had never seen them on Earth before. So yeah. at some point they must have been here. And they said, you know, which probably was happening a while ago. Sure. So we started putting dates to things later on. All right, so putting it all together, how does deep time relate to uniformitarianism and uh, catastrophicism? Well, just basically, we know that the catastrophicism doesn't take that much time at all. Mm -hmm. We're looking at changing the landscape of the Earth, mm -hmm. where uniformitarianism takes a really, really long time. But both of them have actually been happening kind of simultaneously just over the course of a long time. So we've yeah. had meteorite impacts. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had tsunamis that take place. Sure, huge earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, things like that, that have impacted the Earth's landscape in a really, really short amount of time. And those are catastrophes that have happened. 
and they've been happening for basically the duration of the entire history exactly. of Earth. Yeah. yeah, and this uniformitarianism, those little processes, things that are happening now, have been mm -hmm. happening that whole time on Earth. Exactly. That's it. That was a quick one. All right, it was a quick one. So we're back. Uh, make sure you get back to the website and take that quiz. Make sure you have your, your notes with you, and, uh, and you get 100% on that. Yeah, good luck. We'll see you guys tomorrow in class. All right, see you later.